This video on NPCs is sponsored by Squarespace.com. NPC stands for non-player character. Originating in video games, it was a term used to label the characters in the game that the player could not control. And as technology has evolved, NPCs have gotten really a lot of detail. As you can see here, look at this. You're gonna need to get really close to your screen to see the details on this one. Ready? Are you close to your screen? All right, now NPCs look like this. But we love this term. We love calling people NPCs, kind of implying we're the main character too, from using it to describe people that listen to Drake or using it to describe people that really like Marvel movies to using it as a label for people that live right here. These guys, you people, this area. And I know this is a lot of space and there's probably a lot of people here, maybe. I don't know. I don't think anyone knows, really. But... There's no way that God coded the main character of the game to take place here. I'm sorry. That's asking too much. That's like expecting the main boss fight of a video game to take place in the loading screen. Like when Jesus comes back, there's no way he spawns in Oklahoma. But now the term has kind of expanded past its literal meaning and is now used as a word to just kind of describe anything mundane or lacking in personality. Just like the NPC models in a video game, fashion NPCs also look like the devs did not spend any time and just wanted to meet the bare minimum and fill some space. Like we probably all share this memory. Remember the crowd in the Madden games and the 2K games? Swear to God, I saw a couple of y'all in there. I remember faces. I can also spot a Fog Essentials where from a mile away. But this is completely normal. In fact, it's actually necessary. We need fashion NPCs the same way that games need filler in the audience, bro. I'm not gonna draw every single person as an individually unique model. We, we can't all be players. If everyone's the main character, then no one's the main character. Also, you can't be the main character in Panda Dunks. I'm sorry, I don't know who told you that. Also, I don't care that you and your girlfriend are matching. That's not, that's not unique. That's just the devs getting lazy and, and cloning your model. And with the interest of casually being into fashion at an all time high, as we can see here, we are also seeing the rise of fashion NPCs. I would like to preface this by saying that I'm aware that this does not help my case of the whole, bro, we can't wear shit around you. I know. This is just a big step in my quest of becoming a fashion hater completionist. There's a million fashion hobbyists and fashion historians, but in no time I'll be the rank one fashion hater. All right, so what specifically makes a fashion NPC? What does that even mean? Your first thought is probably someone who doesn't have any interest in fashion in general and just kind of just wears clothes because it's illegal not to. And you would be right. This is the most common and obvious case of a fashion NPC, but you'll be surprised at how much deeper it gets. My theory is that a fashion NPC is spawned when something that was otherwise exclusive becomes readily available to the masses. And then even when that evolution happens, people are still left with the mentality of, I have something that you want, but you can't have. And for most, that suffices their wants and needs when it comes to fashion. NPC mentality. In business and tech, there's a theory called the diffusion of innovations. And there are five major groups of people in this. The innovators, the early adopters, the early majority, the late majority, and the laggards. I feel like the terms are pretty self-explanatory and easily translate into fashion. With the innovators and early adopters being like your style icons or your trendsetters. But it's only about 15% of people here. You can't all be here. And chances are, you're not. This is where everyone wants to be and where everyone thinks they are, but you're not. Anyways, the NPCs fall in this section right here, the back 50%, the late adopters and the laggards. And like I was saying about NPC spawning when scarcity becomes available, in the timeline of a trend, this is where it usually happens too. Most prime examples we have here are the Fog Essentials and the Panda Dunks. This is the meme that I love beating into the damn ground like a dead horse. And because of this reason, it's the perfect example of the diffusion of innovations in fashion, at least contemporarily. Starting with Fog Essentials. Fear of God used to be the height of the fashion zeitgeist in like 2015 and 2016. Everyone wanted in on this, but the barrier for entry was really stiff. First of all, everything was stupid expensive. 
especially for the time where people weren't as ambitious with their fashion spendings as they are now. And even if you did have the budget or if your parents had the budget, everything was sold out. Remember zipper pants gate? I've never seen more people on Reddit, but as time went on, pieces became more and more available. And then with the genesis of the essentials line, the masses now had access to what was otherwise exclusive. And like I said earlier about this being the fashion NPC objective from the start, they all settled here. There's no need to innovate when I already feel like I'm better than you in my essentials. And this exact thing went for Panda Dunks. Everyone wanted Dunks. Nobody could get them. Panda Dunks came out, they became super available everywhere and also so happened to be the easiest colorway to style ever of all time. Dunks still kind of feel exclusive. Now I got Panda Dunks, I'm the main character. I'm the main character. No, I'm the main character. No, I'm the real Buzz Lightyear. No, I'm the real Buzz Lightyear. No, I'm the real Buzz Lightyear. This is just the first level though. This is just the base model of which fashion NPCs can build on. And now we're starting to see the evolution of fashion NPCs across all genres of fashion and not just your basic mall core or like minimalism. It goes deeper. Rick Owens, a brand that you think to be too exclusive or out there to outfit NPCs, but you will be surprised. Rick NPCs have been spotted all over the globe, usually identified with their strict adherence to the basics like Ramones or Geos or, or just the essentials from the Dark Shadow line, really. The average Rick NPC sticks hard to the path of least resistance. It's just, just the easiest fit type that you can make in this essential. Aesthetic. And you could make the argument that, oh, they're not NPCs because they had enough substance to even get themselves to styling Rick. As says the guy typing this, wearing a mountain hoodie right now. How could I be an NPC? I'm wearing Ramones. Ramones are the panda dunks of Rick. Hot take. Look at this outfit right here. The point I'm making is that could be anyone. Surprise, it's me. The Rick NPC is just an NPC in a cool husk. Like here are three Rick NPCs right here, these types of outfits. And now here are three Rick outfits with some personality, with some individuality, with some plot. Graphics don't make the game, story does. Even Balenciaga, a brand where you think it's exclusivity and it's prestige can clinch its release from the NPC title. The people that follow this brand are mostly NPCs. I just gotta get clothes that are so big that they can compensate for my lack of creativity here. If my clothes are massive, who would have thought of that? What if my hoodie was just so big? What if my hoodie was just so big? Put me in a boardroom right now. Make the guys around me saying, make the hoodies big and make the shoes big. What if we try to incorporate personality and then now throw me out of the boardroom? I can buy my personality in the shape of a rain boot croc. Again, like I said, there are so many cool things that you can do with the style opportunity that wild pieces like this present. Yet we settle for mannequin fits. Again, graphics don't make the game. Now what these five fits right here have in common isn't obvious visually. I mean, come on, like how is this? How are these two fits even remotely related? But the common trait shared here is that they are all formulaic. There is no unique fit language, which brings us into the last section of this video, which is fit language. So when you think of fit language, right, you probably default to the obvious ones, like Kerwin Frost, Bloody O, Wisdom, Tyrone, you know? The usuals that are just so out there they're just kind of in their own lane. This girl right here, Hamster Stance, is insane when it comes to identifiability. Her proportions and compositions can be spotted even if I was just squinting at my screen like this. Like if I was like, I don't even know what I'm looking at, but I know that's her, like, look at this. Like, you can tell that's her. It's just a prime example of maximizing style opportunity on all accounts. But fit language doesn't always have to be this demonstrative and obscure. A lot of the times it's very oblique and subtle. Someone who I think has very clear fit language despite being very aesthetically simple is Daniel Simmons. Taking a more minimal approach, I feel like the vibe he gives off is there's always that one guy that's like, that's just a big jacket. I can do that. Congratulations, you added nothing to the conversation, but you kind of are right. And that's what's kind of cool about it. It's nothing crazy, yet a very clear fit language. And also, fit language doesn't necessarily have to lead an aesthetic meta either. Like these two might seem like they're kind of at the top of their influence in their own respective genres. But let me show you something real quick. Let me cook, just let me cook, hold up. All right, inside you, there are two Hassans. One of these is known for his 
polarizing political opinions, massive, loyal online audience, and an avid affinity for fashion. The other one's a Twitch streamer. I can already see the kex. See what I mean? Massive, loyal audience. I see you, chat. But you know what the difference between these two Hassans is? Here's probably the hottest take of the year, and maybe one of my worst, but I also stand by it. One of these Hassans has a definitive fit language, and it's probably not the one wearing the H&M bomber. <sighs> Hassan Piker is a good example of somebody with definitive fit language. You hate to fucking say it, but you love to fucking see it. And you also hate to fucking see it. You probably think I'm trolling, but like I said, let me cook. Let me cook. Take a look at this Wendy's sampler of Hassan fits I got here. Even though some of these might be questionable. Some of these might even be controversial. Hell, some of these might not even be that good. Some of them might even be bad. Hell, most of them might even be bad. A lot of them might even be bad. You know what? Maybe even all of them might be bad. They might even be disgusting. And when I look at them, I get a bad taste in my mouth and I get nauseous and I want to take a nap. But regardless of your opinion on these fits, there is a very unique and defined aesthetic that most people actively hating in fog essentials and panda dunks will never fully get a grasp of. Now these fists right here, these guys are probably getting overtime pay being mid. We need a call for the unionization of mid. If you guys are gonna be doing this full time, you might as well get benefits with paid leave. And at the end of the day though, what you find appealing is subjective. This all comes back down to this, but it's how you incorporate those elements is what separates you from the crowd. Honestly, being a fashion NPC is fine, especially if it's not your goal to dress further than what the trends supply. But if you wanna feel like the main character, you gotta give us a reason why you deserve some space in the plot. And the same thing goes for your online presence, like a website. Give me a reason to take you seriously. And to do this, I wanna thank the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. I made my entire brand website on Squarespace. Watch, I'll show you. Squarespace is the best place to make a website for absolutely anything. They got over hundreds of award-winning designer templates so that you can make a website look exactly how you want it without any knowledge of web design, like me. Like I said, I made my entire brand website using Squarespace and I had a great time making it look as stupid as possible. Tens, if not hundreds of thousands of people are probably gonna end up here maybe if optimistically in my dreams. And if I'm confident enough to start that journey with a Squarespace template, then you have no excuse. Even when it came to everything commerce related, Squarespace had everything I needed in-house, so it only took five minutes to set up the whole store. So if you wanna try your hand at making a website or for anything, go to squarespace.com slash frugal aesthetic now, and you'll get a free trial of the website builder so you can see how easy it is and how cool it is. And if you wanna publish your website, you'll get 10% off your first order. Again, squarespace.com slash frugal aesthetic. If you want to see it in action right now, you can go to raised.online. Go ahead and buy yourself a Pain Station tee while you're there. If there are any left, follow me on everything. Pain Station tees are out now at raised.online and then 17 underscores on Instagram. Thank you for tuning in to the channel and for staying here. It's been a wild ride and happy new year. God, crazy year. I'll see you in 2023, baby. That's going to be seven years of doing this. I'm almost there. 100% fashion hater completionist coming soon. Buy yourself a pain station tea, bro.